boys are down for a nap in our family bed and I have 15 minutes to look on my Crunchy Mom group on Facebook. Ooh, gonna have a baby in March of this year. What are your must-have products? A mama roo? More like mama who? Baby monitors. Why isn't your baby with you? A snoo? How about a boob? I thought this was a crunchy mom group. An Epa Baby Vista V2 stroller? Oh, please don't push your baby away from you. Honestly, all you need are your boobs and a Sakura Bloom baby carrier. The cashmere one is only $400. Think of the savings if you didn't buy all those other containers. Babies don't need containers. All they need are you. If you want, you could invest in some cloth diapers, but honestly, if you're truly using elimination communication, your baby will be able to communicate their needs before you know it. The boys are climbing on their pickler triangle, so I have a few minutes to look on my Crunchy Mom Facebook group. Here's one. How do I get my four-year-old to go to sleep before midnight? Midnight? That's late. Let's see what everyone else is saying. Diffuse lavender, yes, of course. Don't give any sugar beyond lunchtime or no sugar at all. What's this? The original poster is saying that her child falls to sleep watching television every night? Why do you even have a TV? First of all, you need to eliminate all screen time for your child, period. Audiobooks are okay occasionally. Second of all, I would turn off all artificial light after 6 p.m. or at least get your child some red tinted glasses or change your bulbs to red light bulbs every night. Make sure all of your walls are painted with EMF blocking paint and unplug any Wi-Fi routers and smart home devices if you would even allow such a thing. Invest in a tincture that contains catnip. Give 10 drops 30 minutes before bed. And for the love of goodness, your child needs to spend one hour outdoors barefoot, no matter what. That should do it. You've got this, mama. The boys are drawing in their nature journals right now and I have a few minutes to look on my Crunchy Mom Facebook group. Oh, here's a question. New to the Crunchy community, my four-year-old started running a fever last night. What should I do? So simple. Oh dear mama, take a deep breath and smile. A fever is a good thing. It means her immune system is functioning properly. Emoji. Her little sweet hypothalamus will control her body temperature and not allow it to cause any harm. A fever is not an illness. It's a positive sign. Whatever you do, do not give your child Tylenol. Here's my fever regimen. At four, I'm assuming she's still nursing, so be sure to offer the boob as often as possible. Give her organic pasture-raised chicken bone broth every 10 minutes. You really should have a steady supply saved in your freezer. Apply oregano oil to the bottom of her feet using a carrier oil. Be sure you're giving her elderberry syrup, colloidal silver, organ grape root, wild cherry bark, and apple cider vinegar. Most importantly, get outside barefoot so the Earth's electric charge can influence the bioelectric function of her body. We have free medicine all around us with sunshine and fresh air. Hope your little one feels better soon. You're awesome, mama. Boys are finger knitting, so I have a few minutes to look on my Crunchy Mom Facebook group. Here's a good one. Thinking about homeschooling, what are your favorite curriculums? First of all, I think we need to unlearn and de-school ourselves and consider unschooling. Children learn whatever they're interested in. Your children likely already choose what they eat from their plates and what they will wear from the day. How is what they will learn any different? In teaching, ask yourself, does this really matter? If your kid doesn't think so, maybe you should focus on feeling their curiosities instead. Who said snails can't be a tactile math tool? Unschooling is a lifestyle in which, quote, school, unquote, happens all the time. The only regret I have about unschooling is how much time I wasted trying to school myself on which curriculum to choose. You've got this, mama. The boys are doing watercolors right now, so I have a few minutes to look on my Crunchy Mom Facebook group. Oh, this is a good one. I'm thinking about subscribing to attachment parenting style when my little one is born. What are your thoughts? Yes, go for it. Your child's lifelong cognitive and psychological health are determined in their first 2,000 days. The first 400 days are the easiest. Babies are perfectly adept communicators. Just read their cues. Oh, he's hungry? Boob. Seems tired? Boob. Bonked his head? 
boob. There's no need to fiddle with conventional baby products like bottles, pacifiers, or containers because you will be holding them constantly. Remember, the original pacifier was the boob. My middle son is 1,460 days old and he still loves to climb up into my Tula toddler carrier. Is it physically taxing and completely exhausting to have someone Velcro to you every moment, day and night? Yes. Is it a sacrifice you're willing to make? I would hope so. You've got this, mama. Boys are playing with their moon face puzzles, so I have a few minutes to look on my Crunchy Mom Facebook group. Oh, here's a good one. Visited an OB to talk about birth control options, but I feel uneasy with what they had to say. Does anyone use any natural family planning? Look at the book, Lunaception, a feminine odyssey into fertility and contraception. Nature and the universe are full of rhythms and cycles. Why would women be any different? In fact, most languages have the same root word for moon and menstruation. Before industrialism and processed foods disrupted traditional cultures, women ovulated at the full moon and menstruated at the new moon. This book showed me we can apply the lighting patterns of the moon to our own bedroom to realign our cycles with the phases of the moon. Here's how. Your room should be so dark that you cannot see your hand in front of your face except for three days nearest the full moon in which you allow moonbeams to shine through your window onto your womb. If that's not possible, you can emulate full moonlight using various nightlight. If you must use a nightlight through the darkening cycle, make sure it's a red bulb to emulate the firelight of our ancestors. Don't forget to chart your cycles to see all all your progress. It's really very simple and empowering to be so in tune with your body and in touch with nature. You've got this, mama. The boys are whittling, so I have a few minutes to look at my Crunchy Mom Facebook group. Oh, here's one. Thinking about getting Botox, what are your thoughts? Attention, admin. This is spreading dangerous information and causing people to question themselves. Please consider suspending this member as these types of questions do not align with the values in this group. But while I'm here, if you spend your time and resources trying to eliminate toxins only to turn around and inject a neurotoxin into your face, you might want to reconsider your lifestyle. Why can't we just embrace the beauty of lines, proving the gift of time we have spent on this glorious planet? May the crow's feet on my face prove how frequently I laugh. May my frown lines be a sign that finally I'm getting into a deep enough sleep for my face to fold. And these 11s on my forehead are proof of the concern and contemplation I have for my family, our wellness, and our future. Embrace your natural expressions and be bold in supporting body positivity because you are beautiful. Always remember that. You've got this, Mama. The boys are looking at our pressed flower collection, so I have a few minutes to look on my Crunchy Mom Facebook group. Here's one. My baby has issues with chafing, looking for natural products. Who needs natural products when nature has provided an abundance of herbal remedies ready for use? For chafing, I like to use the fuzz from the flowers of cattails. Just stick it into the skin folds to prevent chafing and diaper rash. Another bonus for using cattails is the jelly-like sap found between the lower stems numbs the gums and relieves teething pain when used sparingly. You can also use the pollen to extend your flour for baking and for making cattail pancakes. Really, just one of the most versatile plants around. You've got this, mama. 